This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Because quite frequently you will want to repeat actions in your VBA or step through parts of rows or columns or data within your Visual Basic routines, you are going to at some point need to use a loop. Now there are a number of looping structures available to you in VBA and the first of those that we will have a look at is the for next loop. Now if you open the for next working file you'll find in module one there is a simple syntax layout. It's called the for next loop because it simply starts with for and ends with next. The for starts with a counter so this is effectively a variable that you don't need to declare but you need to give it a name equals a number to a number so from one point to another point you can even tell it then to step and this is optional hence the square brackets at different values other than one from the start to the end so if for example we were going to say four counter equals one to ten it would automatically go from one to two to three to four all the way to ten unless you change the step value and you can go step two so it'll go to two four six eight etc or you can actually go minus so you could step minus one and you could go backwards Whilst you are within the parameters of this counter, when we get to next, it will come back round to the next number in the counter list. So if we're going from 1 to 10, it'll go from 1, next will then come round and go to 2, next will come round and go to 3. Within the for next loop, we then carry out some actions. So we have here actions to carry out, and there are two options in here exit for, so there's an option to get out of the loop without actually getting to the end. If we get to the end, then you'll come out here with the next step in your commands. Or we can exit for, so we can actually trigger some way of exiting the loop because we've met a certain criteria or something before we actually complete the whole loop. It could be we're searching through a set of rows to find something. The next statement can simply say next with the name of the counter repeated if you want, but that's not compulsory. Hence the square brackets. Now, if you're using a lot of for next loops in your programming, it can be quite useful to actually put the name of the counter. So if I was going to say for x equals 1 to 10, here I would say next x, so that I know that that next refers to the for. VBA would not have a problem. It would be looking for the next in the right place, but it just makes life a little easier for you to read your code. So let's have a look at using a for next loop in our file. So we create ourselves a sub procedure, sub test fill. And what we're going to attempt to do is filling a range of cells. So let's declare our counter. We'll say dim x as integer. I tend to personally use single letter counters, X, Y, Z, K, L, M. You can use counter if you like the word counter, but it's less the type if you use a single letter. For X equals one to 20. Let's use the object active cell dot offset. We've seen this offset previously when we used the range object. And we're going to set the row offset to actually be the value of X and the column offset to be zero. So we actually stay in the same column. And we're going to set the value to be X itself. And then next, now I can put X here if I want or not. It's totally optional. If I leave it off, this will still work. If I go have a look in the Excel, I'll choose this as my active cell. So that's E6. Come back and run the test fill. Go back to the Excel and we see it's gone offset by one and then another one, another one, another one, but it's put in the value of X all the way down. So it's gone all the way to 20. So you could see that could be quite a useful ability to insert values by just simply creating a little loop rather than saying active cell to offset one comma zero equals one. Active cell to offset two comma zero equals two. Active cell I hope you get the message. So we're looping through X, which we've created as a variable, an integer, and we're going step, step, step through here. Let's assume we want to go up in twos. So we can add the optional step bit here. So we've got step two. We need to go into Excel. Let's choose a different active cell here. Back to the Visual Basic and rerun test fill. And have a look. And you can see that we are stepping by two. So our offset becomes two cells. And we go, let's go three, five, seven. 
So the value in here for the offset is x, which goes up by two each time. So we get a one, we then get a three, we then get a five. And the value that goes in is also offset. Let's look at a for next loop with an exit. So you don't have to actually complete the loop. So let's create ourselves a new sub. I'm going to call it find num. And we're going to use it to loop through a set of values that we have in Excel and find a value. So the first thing I want to declare is a number. Find search as integer. Only because I know they're whole numbers. Let's declare our counter. This time I think I'll use K. Let's declare another variable, which I'm going to call M as integer. And that's going to store the current value of the cell we're looking at. Let's set the value that we're looking for, which is search. So let's say we're looking for a nine. And then let's create our little loop to search through all the cells in our range to see if we can find nine. So we need a four next loop. So four K equals one, two, 20 because I know there are 20 cells in my range. And then next, K. Now again, the K is optional. The reason I put the next straight after I've typed the four is so I don't forget to put the next and cause the code to crash. I then tend to indent once we're in the four. Our next stage is to get the value of the first cell and place that in M. So M is going to be equal to the range object using cell E7 dot offset K comma zero. So I'm going to come down the column. So each K, each time I loop round, I'm going to move down one more cell. And I'd like the value of that particular cell at this moment in the loop, which is one. So one's going to be fed into there. So I'm looking at E8. So the value of E8 goes into M. I can then use an if statement to see whether M is equal to my search. So effectively it is nine inside M where we are at the moment. Then what I would like to then happen is actually for Excel to highlight that cell by activating it. So I'm going to say offset K comma zero dot activate and put out a little message box that says found it. At this point, I no longer need to loop through the rest of this range so I can stop. So I can use my little exit for to say let's exit the for loop and then I need to end my if. This is my if statement. If m equals search, then we activate current position that we're at in E7 downwards and put a message box out and then exit the for loop. End if. So if we had not fallen into this criteria, we come out the bottom of the end if and we actually proceed to next, which will bring us back around to the next number. So let's see if that works. Find num and run and I found it. You can see it activates the cell with number nine in. So if I change that nine to a 13 and rerun the find num, I end up looking at 13 activated and the message box pops up. So hopefully you can see that that is quite useful. It also brings in the bits we've used before with the range object. So we're using a for next loop to loop through the values of a counter, in our case, the variable K from one to 20. It then uses that variable K inside the range object to effectively move down through a vertical range by changing the offset to the next row, to the next row, to the next row. I then take the value of each of those cells one at a time, place them in M, and check to see if M is equal to my search criteria, which is 13. If it is, then I actually activate, so I highlight, I move the cursor to whatever terminology you want to use, but in VBA it's activate, the cell that I'm currently looking at, so the current position I am in the loop effectively. I also nicely put out a message box to say found it, and I exit the for loop. So I then proceed right down the code to see what happens next after the next statement. So I'm exiting this current for loop. I then need an end if to finish my if statement off, because if this criteria isn't true, I don't want any of this to execute. I want to carry on with the next loop and effectively come round to whatever the next value of K is, therefore the next cell down in the column. So this is the for next loop. Very useful stepping through cells, rows, columns, ranges within your Excel files.